In this section, we will look at stream processing with Apache Flink time characteristics. In this video, we will look at watermarks and time characteristics such as event time, ingestion time, and processing time. Watermark Flink. So success watermarks is similar to let's say you're pouring juice or water from a jug into another glass. So there is a watermark. You know till what you are pouring it and you till what the bottle is empty or the jug is empty or the can is empty. So there are many things that you can do looking at watermarks where the levels are which gives you a very good picture of where you are with processing and then if there is something coming up and then you need to reprocess it or you need to look at it again. Using the watermarks is very easy for you to recover and then do the needful processing. So watermarks flow as part of the data stream. They carry the timestamp T everywhere. You can generate watermarks anywhere. You can generate at source or you can generate it in any function while processing it. When you look at the parallel subtask of a function, it generates its watermarks again. And the watermarks define the event time at the particular parallel source. So every source pretty much, if you're looking at 10 different types of operations, there's a lot of parallelism going on. The events are all over the place. Every step is watermarked separately. It's not that you just need a watermark at the top level. You need a watermark everywhere because the Flink data stream processing is a very complex pipeline or interconnected pipelines. So you need to really know where you are at every step so that in case something happens, then you know how you can recover from any errors. So that's the key concept behind the watermark. If you see this, it's evident here. So there are watermark 1, 12, 20, and so on. So the watermarks are keeping getting generated as the streaming is coming in. So you know that at any point that if you cover tail watermark of 12, let's say, and then something went wrong, you know that that's where you were at watermark W12. You know that without this marker, you don't know where, where you were in any operation. The time characteristic is another hugely important concept. In, you have ingestion time and you have processing time. You can handle it using either of these, like one or two or three. So event time is when it was created really. When someone logs in, when did he really log into your system? Ingestion time is when did you start processing from the point of when did it even come in to your data flow? Processing time is finally when you really got to it. So that's why these three become key ingredients in how you can manipulate the time-centric property of any event. We'll look at these through hands-on examples now. First, let's look at the event time, time when the event was created a source system. To illustrate this, we will also look at the previous videos, concepts of tumbling window, sliding window, and session window, because those are very much tied to the event time, ingestion time, and processing time. So in essence, we are going to have a few examples here because event time is going to be used for sliding window, session window, as well as tumbling window. In this case, as an event time, which is being used by sliding window, uh, there's a watermark that is being set up here. The watermark is basically assigning the time when the word came in here. So it's showing you, right? So it's a system that current milliseconds. That's the timestamp. We are just generating a timestamp. We're assigning the timestamp and watermark now. So when you do this, as the events are coming in, you're telling it what to do with the event and add something like an event time. So that's the key concept there. Once the event time comes in, but the entire data stream now sees that there is an event time with every single event that's coming up. And based on that, it can do the sliding event time window. Sliding event time window takes care of sliding window, but it uses event time. And event time is something that we are generating here by simply looking at it as a current time milliseconds, which is the latest time in milliseconds. But this could be something that completely comes from a, somewhere outside from a source system or so on. So that's why we are to we're combining the concepts of watermarks and event times and then sliding window, which is a window characteristic. So we'll look at the code in details to be clear how this is working. We're going to use the Splink shell again to illustrate this. So that's the shell, and then there's a network server right there. This is the shell which is open right now. Let's paste this code and we'll look at the code now in detail too. Because this could be a little 
complicated. So this is the code that we just pasted. This could be a little complicated. So let's look at this code in detail now. The code says that there are some import statements here, three in fact. There is a word timestamp count, which takes the word and the timestamp and the count in this case. It's slightly different than previous use cases where we simply had a count of the word as a frequency. This is a key thing where we are setting the stream time characteristic as the event time. So we're saying event time is to be used from this event. But then there's a key thing called timestamp assigner because without timestamp assigner, you're not really assigning the timestamp. So in other words, what happens here is when you say assign timestamps and watermarks, uh, you pass in an assigner which is custom made because we created this. So when the words are being emitted, the flat map breaks the sentence into words and each word goes through this case class assignment. Then every such word timestamp count case class, which is an object, goes through this step, right? That's why we are seeing the input as a word timestamp count. So this is a special implementation of this ascending timestamp extractor, right? And then that's a trait. Here we are assigning the input dot timestamp to extract that. So do you're extracting the timestamp and assigning it. But since we are considering everything as event time, what happens is the system dot current time milliseconds, which is the latest or current time in milliseconds, automatically becomes event time. So let me repeat that again, right? We are going to break the sentences into words and assign a case class to each word with the current time in milliseconds assigned as a just like a timestamp. But then because the assigner or the watermark, the timestamp or time characteristic is considering the same timestamp, what happens really is that this is becoming the event time. So once this becomes an event time, you're able to do a simple operation such as this, sliding event time windows, where you're going to consider that a time as the event time and perform a sliding window of five seconds and slide every one second on top of it. Okay, take a pause and just look at this again. We are saying that the time characteristic is event time. We are assigning a way to assign an event time to every single, let's say event after the transformation without map. And for that, we are just overriding the timestamp assigner extract ascending timestamp function and then using that event time to do the sliding event time window, which is pretty much like last five seconds, last 15 seconds, that kind of use case. So let's run this code and see what happens. We're ready now. We're going to type some random stuff. As you see, we see whatever we typed here on that, but this is going through a sliding window. Right? This is not a tumbling window. This is a sliding window and we're considering that the timestamp is an actual event time. So let's type another character here. See, when you typed A, what happened? It printed all these things because it's a sliding window, as I said. So as you're generating events, it keeps sliding the window. But behind the scenes, what's happening is this timestamp is becoming the event time and then we're establishing a sliding window on the event time. The next example, event time tumbling window, the only difference here is we take the event time anyway as usual. Event time can also be considered for tumbling window. Tumbling window does the similar thing as in the previous example, except that this is a tumbling event time window instead of sliding event time window. That's the only difference in the entire code. There's no other difference. Uh, this is going to do every 15 minute, every five minute, every minute rather than last one minute, last five minute, last 15 minute, like in sliding wave and window. Otherwise, it's exactly the same code everywhere else. The next example <laughs> window is kind of similar because the event time, once you do it once, is simply the copy paste thing, except that here you look at event time session window with a gap. So this is different because in session window, you have a gap. You want to see how long the user is connected. Let's say the user is coming to your website for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You want to set up a gap and there's no activity for 10 seconds. In this case, this session will be closed. So that's a session window. You know, please refer to the previous video for an exact difference between tumbling window, sliding window and session window. 
But as I said, the code, that's the only difference between sliding, session, and tumbling is this specific call of session, sliding, event time window, event time session window, and tumbling, event time window. So that's the only API call which is differentiating. The next one is called ingestion time. This is when the event actually enters the data flow first time. Just because something is coming in doesn't mean it's process. So this is the difference between ingestion time and the eventual processing time. If you see this code, this is the sliding window on the ingestion time. You don't see really much difference, right? Except that you're going to consider a ingestion time as a time characteristic. So the time characteristic becomes the ingestion time. Otherwise, there is no real difference in how this window really works. That's the beauty of the Flink API. Not much really to know once you get hold of one of the techniques, you can pretty much use it for the other examples too. Similarly, the ingestion time, tumbling window, you need a tumbling window instead of sliding window. You need a session window instead of sliding window or tumbling window, but essentially you're assigning ingestion time and after that it is kind of trivial. So I would say that the big difference or the big thing that you have to really look at is, I'll just paste it here in the shell. You need to look at it as an ingestion time. So it's like this. So set the stream time characteristic, you can set up as ingestion time. I'm not passing the entire code, so those just ignore the error. So I can do processing time like this. I can do event time like this. So I can assign different time, event time or processing time or ingestion time. And similarly, I can use a sliding window, session window, or tumbling window on top of this. So we have total nine combinations of how we can look at the time characteristic and the window how the window uses the time characteristic. This is critical because this is what is the crux of the stream, data stream processing systems. Without this, you're not going to get many of the use cases solved in your code. So that's the reason that we are differentiating between these different styles or characteristics in the window clearly. The third one, as I said, is the processing time, which is when that event was processed. Again, we have a sliding window on processing time. It's called sliding processing time window. You should see that this is another difference now. Sliding event time window was used for both ingestion and event time. But for processing time window, there is a sliding processing time window. So which is a different API call. There's a tumbling processing time window as expected. Again, all these code examples are there. So you could paste all this code and try it out yourself and the individual combination. There are nine combinations. We are not going through all the different combinations, but the code is provided. This is the session window on the processing time. 